time for 28mm World War II action. Will you recreate history or reshape it your way? On the Bolt Action Hub at beastsofwar.com. A world of hideous nightmares awaits in Kingdom Death Monster. Fight to survive or fade into darkness at the Kingdom Death Hub at beastsofwar.com. So, hi everybody, I am back with Dave from Hawk War Games, and in this one, we're going to be talking about the command cards. Now, anyone who's mm -hmm. familiar with Drop Zone Commander is going to know what command cards do. But, Dave, for anyone that doesn't know what the command cards do, can you give us a quick overview of what they're going to do in the game for you? So, command cards are um, the kind of the effect of the commander, slash, in this case, admiral, mm -hmm. on the game. So, the, the more points you pay for your admiral, the higher level they are, rank. Mm -hmm. um, say, if they're at level 4, that means you can hold 4 cards. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can play them at various points in the turn, and they do various different things. They're kind of the cinematic kind of skewing moments ah. for the game that, you know, you can give something your opponent really isn't expecting mm. with cards, um, which is really fun, and it means you, you constantly have to be guessing what your opponent might have. Mm -hmm. Some of them are very simple, like repairing damage points on ships or mm. blocking another card that's espionage. Is. Anyone who's familiar with Drop Zone's cards knows about espionage. It's mm. the most lovable and hated card in the game. Depending on whether you've got it or whether your opponent has it, <laughs> so it's it's basically the the little character moments. I expect this ship to be able to pull off this nasty little trick. Yeah, can, exactly. I, I mean, there's this. always a chance they've got an espionage, and mm. you know these are a, in some way similar to Drop Zone in that there are standard cards that all four factions share. Yeah, and there are some uh, faction specific. Mm -hmm. So there's a different deck for each faction, and they also impart a bit of flavour to that faction specifically. Mm. You know, that's how their cards work. It's about fifty fifty, which ones are standard and which ones are unique. Right, cool. Uh, I am noticing these decks look a little bit heftier than the, the Drop Zone ones. They is are, yeah. There? Yeah, Drop Zone is 40 cards and these are 56. Mm -hmm. um, that's just, there's a bit more variety in there, a bit yeah. more things going on. And also, in Drop Fleet, all the cards are global. Okay. In Drop Zone, there's a command radius thing, so you have to be yeah. often near your commander yes. or a scout to be able to play cards. Okay. Drop Fleet doesn't have that. So it's easier to just cycle through cards more, mm. so there are more of them. They tend to be a smidgen less powerful, but mm -hmm. in a few cases, more powerful. There are okay, some really well, good ones in here. Well, let's, let's, let's <laughs> crack straight into it. So you, you've given me an image here. The first thing is some UCM ones. So what's this card we're seeing up here, just for curiosity? Um, so this one's um, letting you activate a single group in a friendly battle group prematurely. So really useful card. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if the opponent thinks they've won activation, yeah. They're planning on doing it, you get, ah, ah, I'll get to do this little squadron oh. first. And so that's because it's an alternate activation game for people who aren't familiar with mm -hmm. that. So you're constantly trying to get one up on your opponent on yeah. activations. So it's that moment if you have your opponent retreating, they're going, yes, I can get this ship out of the way. And you go, ah, no. Yeah. <laughs> See, those, uh, those uh, couple of burn throughs, yeah, they're going to hit you before you get yeah. there. I mean, generally, we don't like cards to be game-winning, mm. and most of them aren't game With Some of them, on occasion, might win you the game. Yeah. You know, of course they will. They do something. You know, anything that does anything might oh, win yeah, you the it'll game. It'll affect the balance of power. Yeah, yeah, but they're yeah, not kind of... Them just oh, gonna... no, no, go for it. That's um, We'll get into them. All right. Well, I'll, seeing as you know the cards, sir, Yep. I will let you pick... So these are all um, standard uh, playing card size, so you can put them in sleeves for, mm. you know, standard cards. Yeah. Um, there's good old espionage. Uh, they've all got um, flavor text on the bottom as well. Mm -hmm. um, so these are all the standard ones. Mass transit system. That one's quite a cool one. All right, these are the standard uh, cards. I should have a, a close camera that I can put this. We'll on. spend um, we'll so spend a little longer on the UCM than the others because mm -hmm. we'll go through the standard cards that they all get there at the front. So this one links two clusters together. Ah. So even if you don't have any means of moving your troops, you can use that card to connect two clusters with a mass transit system ah. to move troops. Very much like underground monorail in drop zone. Mm -hmm. um, I like this yeah. idea. Is this, is this a general one? This general one, yeah. These are All these first ones we'll talk about are general ones. Okay, very cool. You I know, like the idea that I don't have to get ships on top of every single sector. And it means that I can sort of be sneaky, get down, play that, get some troops down, and get yeah. them funneling through. You can if you have a copy of it, which is, of course, the thing with cards, because you can never really plan a strategy around them uh, unless you've got them. It's yes. a 56 card deck, and there are two copies of this card in there. So uh, there's a fairly good chance that you'll never see it in game. So you've, it, it's you'd kind be of. You'd be surprised at how yeah. often people will see these cards yeah. popping up. 
you got things like uh, recalibrate. No, Master card sharks yeah. out there, beware of them. Oh yeah, yeah, you've yeah, don't um, don't don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, repair crews, recalibrated targeting, a lot of the the kind of more basic cards are the standard ones. Like that gives you Im improved accuracy on your weapons, yeah. repairs ships. You know, they're they're pretty kind of standard Admiral, admiral's directive. Minus four, but modifier to your strategy rating, which again affects initiative when you turn ah, over cards. That see. one's quite useful. Intensify point defense, which is great if you're about to be hit by a lot of bombers. Mm -hmm. This is one of those situational ones which might be useless see. and might be really powerful depending on mm, what the situation is. Coming. I mean, look, if, I, if I've yeah. got an opponent who's got a hell of a lot of launch and I get that in my hand early, yeah. I'm going to hold it and I'm going to hang on to it. it. Yeah, because when so, that big old wave that. of bombers comes in, yeah. that one's going to really help. Minus one to your point defense required, which is really good because yeah. normally it's fives. Going from fives to fours yeah. is quite a big swing in the odds for yeah. that, so it's a really useful card. Yeah, I do love the little bits of flavor text because mm. uh, for mass, uh, mass transit system, load the, man, the men into the hyper real. Command's got more targets for us uh, the next city over. Yeah. And then the other one is just amplify forward firepower. Yeah, you can I just imagine yeah, the commander um, yeah, standing yeah. on the bridge going, do it! Small Star Wars nod there, I've got to say. there. Ah. Are, I do put these things in occasionally because I write these, but um, mm. <laughs> you know, dissipate energy, that's a good one. That removes okay. all spikes from your ship. As long as I'm um, not throwing it about the place. Really so, useful card, here. that one. So what exactly is it doing? Uh, that one's removing all, point, all spikes from one of your ships. Ah. Really handy. You know, especially if it's a battleship that the opponent's been putting effort into putting spikes on you. Just go, bleep, bleep, all the spikes go away with that sound effect, which is just quality <laughs> stuff. Um, this is jam the, comms. The, the number of people who love to make the, oh, yeah, the yeah, noises yeah. whenever they I'm, do I'm a sucker for that kind of thing. Jam comms, that one's really useful. Okay, so what's this going to yeah. do for us? So jam comms, that one is, um, just remind myself actually, it's a powerful <laughs> one, uh, so I don't get these things wrong yet. Yeah. That's one group can't use special orders, which is ah. incredibly annoying. There's only that one copy hurt. of that. That, yeah, will, that, that can yeah, really hurt. That will always hurt that card. Like Generally the ones that are less situational and just generally more powerful, there are less copies of. This one in particular, because you can really screw with people with that one. Yeah, it's, it's you know, just that moment of, oh, you're going to do a trick, so you think, nah. Nah, yeah, you're going to go weapons free with that battleship? No, you can only fire one weapon. Powerful. You know, that's why there are four, that's why there are four copies of Espionage in the deck. Yeah, so Espionage is one of the most common cards. You can usually count on having one or two per game. Mm. That's you, you hold on to it until it's yeah. going to be really painful, and yeah. that's when you use it. Yeah, you know? It's that, that counterintelligence of espionage that just works so well, and it's so cinematic as well whenever you're doing it and playing it against your opponents. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're always seeing optical keep targeting rolling, matrix, rolling. skillful We've shot. we got a lot of cards these, here. We don't yeah, have to no, see them all. Detonate drives, that one's quite useful. Oh, God. Um, yeah, this is a really fun one. You should just read that one. Read the effect of that one. <clears throat> okay. Uh, this rule automatically counts as a six on the catastrophic damage table, radiation burst. This may be modified as usual, i.e. ships with a starting hull value of 10 or more will receive a plus one, changing the result to distortion bubble. Yes, so what this, you can only play this card when one of your ships dies. Yeah. And this is bad news for anything that's nearby, because a lot of the time ships blowing up can be very dangerous. Yeah. If your ship is right next to their ship and you Oh, if, distortion if, if, bubble, if I'm on the heart of yeah, a back yeah. or something, this is yeah. distortion bubble is D six damage mm -hmm. with no saving throws to everything within D six radius when yeah. that ship dies. So very powerful card yeah. that one. Really well, good. I, mean, like, I I love the little blurb on this one particularly. <laughs> it's been an honor uh, if I could word <laughs> <laughs> It's been an honor serving with you. For mankind we'll make our end mean something. Yeah. You know, it's it's those because the flavor text actually, even though they're standard cards, the flavor text is different for each faction as well. So, because the flavor text the is part of the like... feel. Well, yeah, they're usually UCM talking about Scourge because <laughs> the Scourge don't really talk. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, those are all the standard ones. We didn't cover all of them, but we covered a chunk of them. Yeah, yeah. So, we don't need to talk about those in mm -hmm. the other decks. We, we've yeah. got some of the. Now, what, what are going to be some of the, the key things for UCM? Because we know they're sort of the all round faction. Yeah, they have they have a few that boost bombers and fighters. Mm. Uh, their bombers and fighters are actually the weakest in the game, mm -hmm. but some of their cards boost that up a bit. Okay, and uh, they've got things that help their shooting with rail guns in particular. Mm -hmm. um, mass drivers in this they're called mass drivers because they're bigger. Of course, um, but that's what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, their cards aren't particularly focused towards one thing mm -hmm. because they're the all round faction. But there are some cool stuff like 
local resistance get you gets you more tokens, which is cool. Um, so I'll, I'll quickly yeah. flash this one under. Fighter aces. This one's really cool. This one gives you. Um, this one gives you point defense bonuses and things useful. Next gen armor plating that gives you a bonus in your armor save. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one's always nice. Naval intelligence. This is um, this is one of the powerful cards. Every faction has a one off, where you only have one copy, and that one's quite nasty. Okay, so um, this is what next gen armor plating. No, or? this is this one here, naval oh, intelligence. Right. So you play at the beginning of the set strategy deck phase, which is where you decide which order mm -hmm. all your battle groups are going to go in. Target uh, one opponent's strategy deck and your strategy deck. Mm -hmm. Effect. You may look at the order of the player's strategy deck, your opponent. Yeah. Yep. And then you may restack yours in a new order. Oh. Powerful card. Really powerful card. Because oh. you just go, right, what are you doing? What order? Okay, so I can win initiative here. I can win initiative here, mm -hmm. but it doesn't screw with your opponent's deck in any way. Yeah, you it doesn't don't change really what. Theirs. Yeah, it doesn't change what they're doing, but mm -hmm. it means you might change what you're doing, mm. which is cool. The other factions have different ones that do different things that are right. even nastier in some ways. No. Well, oh, oh, yeah. Okay, if you're, in, in if other you're ways, being a bad man, I'll let in you other ways, man. not so much because, you, as I say, you can't affect what your opponent is going to do with yeah. that card. That's but the downside. Being able to rejig your stuff to actually say, "Oh crap, he's a, he's about to hit my battleship." Yeah. Yeah, I need to intercept, so I'll win initiative here, attack that, hopefully blow that up, and then my battleship's free to move. Yeah, sometimes it's not amazing. Like There are certain moments where, like, yes, you know that their battleship is going to go first because it's mm. down to two damage points, and it's right in the middle, yeah. and they'd be crazy not to go first. Yeah. So it's not really going to tell you much in that situation, but in other terms, it might be really powerful. Yeah, but it's, it's a very tactical card. You have to really think about what's activating and where. So. Yeah. The, the, the tournament players out there, if this is going to be used in a tournament, are really going to love that, mm. being able to reshuffle their stuff you know, yeah just, it feels just a little <laughs> cheaty but because it's only yeah. one it's only going to happen the odd time. it's only going to happen the odd time and you can't always rely on that strategy order to come out exactly how you expect it to which is yeah. always nice ships of the reconquest that makes medium and larger ships score more when you're right. scoring for missions so unlike drop zones some of these do affect mission scoring which mm -hmm. is quite cool not massively but they do affect yeah, which yeah. is cool Colonial Legions, that's a combat one. Every faction has a ground combat card that of boosts course. ground combat in some way. Yeah, of course. Um, formation Defense, that one gives your ships Aegis so they can protect each other ah. with point defense, which is quite nice. Yep. There's a few kind of combo helping each other ones. Atmospheric Bombing Run, this is a cool card. All right. This is one that um, only the UCM can do this, okay. which is use their bombers against at targets in atmosphere. All right. I will, I'll, I'll just read the thing out here. So, uh, bombers launched... From this ship gain the atmospheric and air-to-air -air special rules until the end of turn. Their targets must be within thrust range, they may not double thrust. Mm -hmm. So if I have something with launch that's close to a sector that you've just invaded, yep. I can send my stuff down, blow up your dropships before you can reinforce, and get the hell out of dodge. Yep, that exactly. is useful. Which is cool. It basically turns anything with launch into an orbital bombardment ship. Mm -hmm. Just at once. It's not permanent, you can only do it once. Yeah. But, but it is cool. Yeah, but it's, it's the nice thing. We carry a small complement of Dominion Heavy Bombers for atmospheric strikes. Tactical flexibility and capability are key to victory. Yeah, very yeah. UCM-ish. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I mass driver it. volley, that boosts your mass drivers. Overcharge lasers. Mm. Um, burn through, please. Yep, yeah, this boosts, this boosts burn through weapons. Superior numbers. Mm -hmm. That one's um, another. There's always two one-offs in every deck. This right. is the other one. One of them affects the strategy deck in some way. The yeah. other one does something else. All right. This one basically gives you a free Rio class cruiser or free Toulons for free. What? Which that... is really quite cool. So hang on, hang on, hang on. So this is the card here. There's usually more text on the more like potent ones that do something more yeah, special. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so I'll let me read this out because I'm trying to figure out how the hell this works. So it's played during the cleanup stage of the planning phase. Right at the start of the turn. Target is one friendly battle group, so I pick my battle group. Um, you gain either one real cruiser or three two long frigates. They become part of the target battle group. They do not join any existing groups, but make a new group in this battle group. Do not add their strategy rating to the overall strategy rating of the battle group. This group gains the outlier special rule. Uh, this group starts the turn in readiness. So you so can you use move them on at the back straight away. You can ah. move on. At, yeah, but you start at the back, obviously. You know. Right. Different times in the game, that might be fantastic. It's brilliant if you have it on turn one. Oh, yeah. But turn one, you only get one card because your Admiral's not on the table. Yeah, but that's... So that the chance that it's one in 56, you know, it's yeah, possible. Yeah, that, that once in a while, just going, by the way, I'm going to have three <laughs> extra two lands. Yeah. It's a nice card, you know. Yeah, it's lovely. It's cool, you know. So that's UCM. Scourge? Yep. Uh, so we'll start with the... 
the one that we've actually photoshopped up here. So oh, what's yeah. this? Expert repair crews. Oh, this is one of the standard ones. That's not a Scourge specific card. Uh -huh. That one's either regains two hull points and also repairs all crippling effects without rolling for die without rolling, which is nice. That's a nice. So touch. it's just a general fixer upper card. Everyone gets that. That's not a Scourge specific one. Maybe so, but it's it's nice to have that yeah. because the number of times I've I've now played John and wished. Man, I wish I could get some repair crews into these ships just so that I could bring myself back a mm. little quicker. Yeah. Very useful. Very useful, yeah. And it just, a lot of ships die in drop fleet. Yep, that's, that's what I love about it. Actually, just... another general thing about the cards is they, on average, mm. tend to favour keeping things alive than mm. killing things. So they yeah. make the game slightly less killy on average. Yeah, but it, it's nice <laughs> to be able to feel like you have that, that control, that extra defence for your stuff, which I really like. Yeah. Oh, here is the nice, straight away, right on top. <laughs> uh, this is the Scourge one-off strategy rating one. Engineered Anarchy. Okay. Play at the end of the set strategy deck phase. Yeah. Target one opponent's strategy deck effect. Uh -huh. The opponent must immediately shuffle their strategy deck. They may not look at the order after shuffling for the rest of the turn. For You mean for their ship order? Yes. Ooh. Hateful card. Absolutely so, hateful card. So hang on, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> so if you played the UCM one on me and looked at mine and reset yours, I could then play that and force you to shuffle yours. Yes. Ah. Yeah. So That'd this is the one in that it doesn't affect yours in any way, but it really screws with your opponent. You know, I, this, is a, this is one of the most powerful cards in the game. Really, yeah. really good. Really, really annoying. Yeah. And it's very Scourge, because the Scourge should make you, go, I mean, should make you hate them. Yeah. You go, yay, don't Scourge. You know, that, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of what but that one does. why? What yeah. did I do? I just tried to blow things up. Yeah. This is quite cool for the species. Mm -hmm. um, target one ship. The targeted ship may ram, even if it has more than two hull points remaining. Ah. Normally, you're only allowed to ram if you're about to die. Yeah. You know, but the Scourge are a little bit more suicidal than everybody else, and that's what that card well, does. They're, they're such an aggressive faction as well. They're going to be up mm. close and personal. Oh. Uh, it's coming straight for us. Full speed. Thermal runway. And target drives detected. What? Yeah. Oh, thermal runaway. Yeah, yeah. Not runaway. So as in, there's something coming straight for them, and they... Yeah. Zoom. Yeah. Nice. Because you automatically die when you ram. Ah. You know, so it's, it's, it's the it's last some, ditch it's thing. It's sometimes worth it. Now, yeah. actually, hang on, let me take a look at that. So, uh, for the species, I just want to double check a thing here. So the effect is... Now, here's something you may need to change on this. Mm -hmm. I hope these aren't all printed yet. They are all printed. Right. On the activation of one friendly battle group, one ship in this battle group. Yep. Ramming with a frigate? Yeah, you can't ram with frigates. The rule okay, says okay, you can't ram okay, with frigates, okay. so you still can't you'll, ram. You'll get some people that will try and use that to ram with a frigate. That was the first thing that jumped out at me there. Yeah, yeah, and that's a FAQ really more than... Because the ramming rule says you can't ram with a frigate. So that's it's fine. Kind of, I, I just I knew someone yeah. out there would try it and just yeah. hang you off at the pass before you annoy Yeah, that probably does belong in the FAQs, but no, you can't ram with a frigate. The core yeah. rule says you can't ram with a frigate. So that, that, That's fine. I was yeah. just looking at it going, wait, would that override yeah. it? No. The only core Fantastic. rule this, this overrides is the fact that you have to have 2 DP or less to do it. It exactly. doesn't override any of the other rules, like that's, you're still ramming, so you can't shoot, or the, you know, that, the that, that stuff. There's, yeah, me, yeah. <laughs> there's me trying to break <laughs> There's the you trying to break the game. Augmentations, this one's quite cool. It gives a space station weapons, even if it doesn't normally have them. Ooh, so what, is this like some kind of bio bomb? That yeah, it's like Scourge add-ons to space stations. We're actually ah. doing a product for this Scourge add-ons for space stations, just nice. for scenic purposes, but this is an actual card that can do that in yeah. games, which is fun. See, I, I don't know, if you've built a, a plane station and one with the Scourge add-ons, you could just trade it out on the tabletop? I think yeah, you could do really that cool. if you were going to... If you're one of those gamers that likes to have all the models oh, for everything, yeah. which is, yeah, you could do that. Oh, yeah, I love that. Yeah, all right. that uh, one's a assimilated bioforms. That's a ground combat one. Uh -huh. They all have those. Abandon all hope. Um, this is a hateful card again. Yeah. Um, opponent strategy deck must discard D3 command cards at random. Really annoying. Hateful, again. Wait, so the command deck, so one of these. Yes, yeah, so you've got four cards in your hand. Discard D3 of them at random. Really Please. annoying. Yeah, especially you know, if you take out yeah. one that they really want it. Yeah, it's more or less identical to a card in Drop Zone, actually, that one. Because that's one that Scourge players love and everybody else hates. Yeah, so. well, <laughs> here's, here's a tip that I've learned uh, from playing a few people, right? So, if you're ever having that done to you, the way I would normally, the way most people would normally actually say, okay, pull three random cards. Now I'm going to look at a card, and if you look at my eyes, you can see I'm looking at a card that I don't want you to take, uh -huh. and thinking, don't take it, don't take it, don't take it. Yeah. But if you see that, take that card. Yeah. If you're smart, <laughs> you'll put it shuffled around a little, 
and put it down to your opponent and say, right, now take your three, because then it does become truly random. Yeah, no, that's what I always do. Yeah, yeah never never look at your cards in that situation. Yeah, I, you can always tell, you can always see like a, exactly, please don't take that one, please don't take yeah, that it's, one. Yeah, it's the eyes, yeah, the yeah. eyes yeah. give it away. Yeah, always does, and I'm a terrible poker player, so it's not, um, oh. <laughs> I just like look no, somewhere else. Me. I look somewhere else. <laughs> Silent Killer, um, this one gives a ship stealth for the remainder of the turn. Oh, beautiful. Useful rule. Um, this one gets gives the ship the beast rule for the remainder of the game, uh -huh. which is cool. Um, that one does various things, probably a bit more complex to go over here, but it's in the rule book. Cool, cool card to play on a battleship. Oh yeah, yeah. something big, you know, evasive maneuvers minus one to enemy lock, plus one to enemy lock when they're mm -hmm. shooting at you. Always nice. Yeah. Um, relentless advance. That one does. Um, no, Double no, their no, base no. for us. It's a speed card, that one. Now, the evasive scourge. maneuvers, that targets one of my ships, yeah? Yep. Not the enemy ship. Yeah, one friendly ship that's being shot at at the time. So they have to have already declared that they're going to shoot, and then you can play the card. Yeah, no, 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 but that's fine, because <laughs> I, I'm just going straight to the PHR on the double broadside. If they get mm. the double broadside off, that will only work for one of the ships to decide the one you want to live. Yeah, it's one friendly ship only, yeah. You, it's not on an enemy. Exactly. Yeah, Relentless Advance, this is nice. It can use double thrust mm -hmm. um, and not count... not on the max thrust order, which is really nice. So you can still shoot. Really nice. cool. You can't do that and max thrust. It says that on the card. Okay. But it is cool. Very useful. Um, aggression. That one's Killing Finesse. Just trying to find the other the other one-off. I think Killing Finesse is the other one-off. Uh, Killing Finesse. So I'll have a, a quick scan through here as well. Oh, yeah. This is cool. Yep. Um, this is a cool card. Play during the cleanup stage of the planning phase. Start mm -hmm. the turn. Um, Target all effect all friendly ships on the table may make one turn with weapons free order this turn. Okay. So they can all turn on weapons free every ship in your fleet if you want. <laughs> nice card. Nice Wait, one, card. Once that more. One. So every sh any ship in your fleet may make one turn on wep on the weapons free special order. Normally you can't turn on weapons free. Yeah. Powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Bit situational. Sometimes it won't help you much, but sometimes it will be. Amazing. I don't know, just being on... able to go, by the way, weapons free and shoot. Yes. Fire. Yeah, with more than one ship too, really good. Yeah. Uh, but it's a play at the start of the turn, so the opponent knows it's coming. Yeah, and they will try you know. and run like hell. Yeah, but good card anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's the Scourge. All right, next up, let's let's have a look at the PHR. PHR. This is one of my favourite factions. Do the honors? So, oh yeah, oh, after you. Oh. So I'll, I'll bring this up. So this is Admiral's Directive. Um, oh yeah, we've already talked about that one. That's okay. another one of the standard ones. Yeah. All right, fair enough. But so it's, it's nice to see that there are some of those things that are common tactics that you would see across all the races that they would all have their own sort of yeah. version of and be similar enough not to worry about. So these ones, some of these, the names are sem kind of somewhat familiar to drop zone players. Okay. The PHR have a number of hack cards. Mm -hmm. They still have... Um, they still oh. have count. They still have hack cards in Drop Fleet as well because they're the techie faction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, countermeasures hack in this case, which um, reduces an enemy ship's point defense to zero. <gasps> Nasty card. Ooh. Nasty card. Yeah, it's that's like warning, warning. Countermeasures offline. Batteries offline. Brace for impact. Rebooting. Yeah, that one's kind of. At which point, by the way, bombers, yeah, yeah. bombers all of them. Yeah. All of them now. It doesn't affect fighters though. It's only base point defense. So if you've got fighters there, you can still do something to protect yourself, but powerful card. Yeah. But um, if, if you see someone yeah, that's yeah. hanging out with no fighters nearby, it's just like, haha, I'm on it. ECM field generator that ignores spikes around a space station or cluster, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Assassination attempt. This is quite cool. All right. Um, play during the planning, planning phase. This is a, what this is their one off strategy deck okay. card. Um, target one opponent's strategy deck. Effect for the remainder of the turn, the opponent adds eight to the strategy rating when determining activation order. So what that means is every time you flip over the cards, chances Plus are you're going to lose yeah. every single time. Unless, yeah, unless it's unless it's a really, really small battle group against a really big battle group. Yeah, yeah, powerful card. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really change the way the turn will play out that much, but winning initiative every it time. It gives you sort of a ninety percent chance of winning initiative every yeah. time. It does, yeah. Nice, cool. useful. Not yeah. as annoying as the scourge one, but very yeah. useful all the same. That's out there. Um, yeah. The target is, yeah, one opponent stressed you did. Weapons hack. This one's a bit texty. Um, okay. But what it really, what it does in essence is lets you pick an enemy weapon and get the enemy weapon firing against one of their own ships. Oh, lovely. Or just not firing at all. No, Handy. no, no. I'm, 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 yeah. If, Handy if I, if and I annoying. If I fire a burn through at one of his own guys, I'll do it. Yeah. The um, ship of the line, which it affects broadsides, which is always useful. Mm -hmm. Command hack. Uh, this one screws, this one 
the opponent may not play any more command cards this turn. If I play that yep. at the start of a turn. Yeah, annoying. Oh. Yep. But um, you can only play it when an opponent's command card takes effect. Ah. Meaning that they have to have played at least one card. So they get at that least card one. has to resolve. Yeah. You can also still espionage this because it doesn't resolve until mm. the stack is done. Yeah. So that there is an FAQ about this. Every single game with cards has yeah. a stacking order and things. It's the same thing. Yeah. You can still espionage this, but once it's resolved, you then can't play any more cards for the rest of the turn. Yeah, that that's one I would hold an espionage yep. card in my hand just in case you had it. Yeah. Repair Drone Squadron, and that one basically turns launch assets into repair things, Ooh. which are really cool. So they help you keep, so keep if, you alive. If, if my battleship is badly damaged, you're like, um, go heal that. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, obviously you're foregoing the ability to hurt people, but it's nice. Useful yeah, card. Keeping some, or something around that's going to do more damage, yeah. yeah. Let's I mean, the PHR that. are tough anyway. Yeah, yeah. This, just, this just makes them tougher. It's a nice card. So let's have a look-see here. Nice. Drive hack. This one's a bit more random. Oh, this God. one does various things to an opponent's movement. You roll a d6. On a 1 to 3, the ship reduces its base thrust by 50%. 4 to 6, it reduces its base thrust to 0, mm -hmm. which is nice. You know, useful. Slows an enemy ship down. Can right. be great. You can't always rely on it because of the dice roll. Well, you know, I don't know, but whenever it comes off, I mean, if you're really trying to keep someone from getting reinforcements to a sector, yeah, that's going to work great. Yeah. Useful card, you know, electromag defe deflectors, that helps your point defense, elite yep. ground forces, that's their ground combat one. Yeah, yeah. Massed weapon banks, I think that's their one-off, very PHR kind of title. All right, let's Play during the cleanup phase, target all friendly ships on the table. Any weapon on these ships with the word caliber in its name gains fusil aid two, which is pretty cool. So what, double so shots? That means, you know, it means you get an extra two dice on those weapons if you're on weapons free. Right. Which is cool. Mm. Nice card, yeah. that one. Really handy. Even if you've only got the one weapon, just getting an extra couple of dice. Yeah. Basically, caliber. All most of the broadside caliber weapons have got yeah. like medium caliber broadside in the name, so it doesn't affect nasty things like the kind of neutron weapons or any really no, no. powerful stuff. But it does does work on those particularly good with the heavies because they have a low number of dice. Mm -hmm. Getting two more dice is really quite potent on them. Yeah, especially with those little updates that we've had for them now. Yeah. No, really nice that one. Mm. So yeah, that's a bit of a. Dip into the PHR. Nice. All right, uh, then we're on to the, the Shaltari, Shaltari, the tricksy so little here? alien spiky yeah. hedgehogs of so doom that they are. Cha. Uh, that's another standard one. Mm -hmm. This um, ship counts as having base signature of zero for the duration of the enemy activation. Other effects that all their signatures still apply. Ah, yeah, so that, that's useful. Important. Very well played on a battleship because they've got massive signatures of like twelve or sixteen, so it's going to yeah. really hurt the enemy range. Yeah, but if if you already have like massive spikes on you, maybe deal with those first. Get them yeah. just to be in regular signature, and then just go. Whoop, whoop, good yeah, night. I mean, it means a lot of the time you won't be able to get shot at, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like for the supercarrier that Sheltari have, that could be very useful. Yeah, this is a cool one for Sheltari. Stealth impel mines. Mm -hmm. Um. You may turn an enemy ship up to 45 degrees. What? <laughs> Give me yeah. that. Um, it's played at the beginning of the turn, so and it doesn't stop the ship from doing anything else that turn. Oh, that's evil. Irritating is yeah. what it is. Tricks, you can deal with it, because you, know, you then activate, you can turn and correct it. Yeah, but but then I, I, you have to course correct yeah, it. It's annoying. Point. It's a really annoying card. Oh. Yeah. So this is sim this is actually similar to the Shaltari's um, mess with your opponent's activation card from Drop Zone. Yeah. Force diplomacy, a little different but similar. Um, play at the end of the set strategy deck. Mm -hmm. Get a theme here. Every faction has one of these. Target the opponent's strategy deck effect yeah. for the rest of the turn. Whenever a player reveals strategy cards, the opponent must roll a dice. On a one to two, they add five to the strategy rating. Three to six, they must reveal the next card and activate that one instead. Very annoying. And what does that and then force the card that they yeah. first flip to and the bottom? To the bottom. Yeah. Annoying. Oh. Yeah. Really annoying. So it's a kind of a variant on the other ones in that this one's a little more random, but the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the randomness is part of the problem because mm -hmm. the opponent still doesn't know what's going to happen. Am I going to lose initiative or am I just going to yeah. get sent to the bottom with this battleship that's yeah. got is, two is, damage is points? Yeah, my initiative order now yeah. screwed. Annoying. Yeah. Yep. Very annoying card. Um, lives of experience. This one's quite nice. Play when drawing cards. Draw three more cards. So you're allowed to hold more cards than you'd normally be allowed yeah, to hold. Yeah, you can boost yourself. Which is cool. The rules actually say you draw up to your command value. 
Yeah. There's nothing to say you can't hold more. Uh, so if other cards mean you draw cards, you can hold, you can keep them. Uh, but if I use that during the next round, I don't discard down beneath my command value. I don't no. draw. Yeah, yeah, you don't get to draw. Like if your command value is five and you're holding seven cards, you can't yeah. draw anything because yeah, you can draw you up to five. Below it. Yeah, you got to be on like three, and then you can draw two yeah. more. For example, yeah. Scout Gate Expedition. This is moving tokens around. Useful. Um, orbital Disruption Field. This one's quite um. This one's quite funky. Right. <laughs> um, this one basically turns a ship with um, certain weapons into a debris field around it. So it basically creates an area of disruption around it. So it means it will hurt enemy ships that fly through it, ah. make it very hard to shoot through. So, I see. So basically, you could throw that up in front of something as a big screen. Yeah. Just going three nope. inch, three inch radius dense yeah. debris field around a ship. Yeah. Really, it's an unusual card, mm. but it can be played with great skill in the right situation. Yeah, and I'm, I'm guessing the ship itself that this is spreading out from doesn't get affected. Oh yeah, it doesn't affect that ship. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, which is um, which is cool. Um, advanced picket ships. Um, yeah. That one's quite cool. That means they can um, keep their low signature even with their shields up. Only works on small ships though, light ships. Yeah, but not having to worry about going <laughs> shields on. Yeah, and then suddenly you're visible to everybody. Yeah, Normally Christmas with Shaltari, you like you have like eight times the signature with your shields up. Yeah, or similar, something like that. Big penalty, and mm -hmm. this takes that away. So really cool, but only works on frigates. Mm -hmm. and there's a downside. War spy, spy Nexus. That gives you um, space stations countermeasures of two up. Yeah, which is quite cool. Nice. Um, you know that's that one's really useful. Navigational mastery, mm -hmm. and that means all ships in the group gain vectored. Okay. And plus two to their thrust, which means they can basically turn ninety degrees, which is really cool. Yeah, and be even and faster. Speedy, and be even faster by two inches. Not as quick as the scourge one makes you, but more manoeuvrable, mm -hmm. which is always nice. I'm um, trying to find the really nice, really nasty ones. Mm -hmm. Power to the weapon. That seem power to the weapons. That's a one off. Um, before firing with one group, target all ships in the group. All, shin, all ships in this group may fire all their weapons on standard orders this turn, but may not raise shields. So you basically can go on weapons free if yeah, you're not on weapons, on weapons free. free. Yeah, this cool card. That, Whole group. Uh, yeah, if you've got your battleship with something else in there, that's going to sting. Yeah. Misdirection, that moves, that's an annoying one. Foresight, you may look at the top five cards of your command card deck, place any number at the bottom and the rest on the top of your deck in any order. Mm. Useful, just divination really to see what's coming. Yeah. That one's handy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that gives you an idea of the Shaltari ones. They're a bit more kind of Tricksy. Tricksy, yeah, which is part of exactly what the Shaltari are. You know? the, the cards really do add the flavour of each faction. You've, mm. you've written them really well because it, it feels properly like the faction. Yeah. Like their combat ethos would have them do it. So yeah. It works really well. Exactly. For me. And they're kind of, the game is designed for the cards to be there. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's worth mentioning how these work. So yeah. you don't have to take, you don't have to play with Kamar cards. You can yeah. play Drop Fleet without, and obviously you don't get them in the starter set. Yes. The first couple of games, we wouldn't recommend using them because they're another element that you need yeah, to pick up could, and, you yeah. know, learn the basic mechanics first. Yep. Um, for full games like tournament play, they're mandatory for tournament play, mm -hmm. at least in our tournaments. You know, other tournament organisers might choose not to use them, but for us, yeah. they'll be standard. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, they, they seem to add a real nice flavour to the game. Yeah. They're not, um, there's no deck building element and there's no customising. Like, you mm. get these decks and that's what you get. So it's yeah. pretty simple. You you get a deck, you mm -hmm. put them in sleeves and then you're done. Yeah. Pretty much. But yeah, they're, they've, they've just come out last month, so they're, uh, they're brand new. Mm-hmm. So these are worth very much worth picking up for your fleet. Well, I, I have to admit, I haven't had a chance to use these yet. So we'll see what happens with that, yeah? Yep, we will. All right. Uh, <laughs> now, you have something else to show off here as well. The specialist uh, ground assets. Oh, this. yeah. This is um, this is another kind of rulesy thing. So this is belongs in this video, really. Yep. Uh, these, are out, this, these are out at the end of June. Uh-huh. Uh, these are the advanced sector pack. Ah, uh, So they're... they're um, they're, they're little resin miniatures. They're in scale with the ships, just uh -huh. like the regular sector pack is. But some of them are huge, like that orbital defense gun is massive. Like you can see the little is, buildings. Is that a burn through on there? It is, yeah. That's yeah. a it's a it's a powerful burn through laser. Really, yeah. really awesome. Um, certain scenarios in the game use these. You get tokens for them in the starter set, so you don't have to have these. But they are nice models, and they they do it's look a cool nice on the table. Nice to have, though. Yeah, you got the comms dish. Um, capturing that gives you more scan range, really mm -hmm. useful. The power plant, which is worth a lot 
in missions, but volatile. So if you destroy it, it can kill lots of things around it. So, yeah, right. and the defense gun, which is just a really powerful thing. So if you've got troops in it, you can use the massive great big defense laser to shoot up at ships, which is pretty <laughs> awesome. You know, you can yeah, make I up like your own idea. scenarios and mix these in with other types of sectors. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, you know, we're going to do a lot more with that in the future. Yeah, you see, the, the one thing I would do with this is I would take two of these, right? I have one, my opponent has mm -hmm. one. All right, you're deploying first. Deploy your, your orbital defense laser there, then I'll deploy mine. Yeah. <laughs> and so you can start trying and guess where your opponent's going to go. Yeah, it'd be really cool for narrative things as well, mm -hmm. where, you've, you know, if you've got certain ones in your half of the board, you can oh, yeah. decide where they, yeah, that would yeah. be cool. There's a lot of things you can do with them. But then, you know, and then I sort of had fun sculpting the big laser, especially because mm. it's like with the kind of Ferris wheel style frame yeah. around it and the, the sheer scale of it. But it does bring home the size of the ships because that's yeah. not much bigger than the UCM cruiser's burn through laser because it is All in right. scale. So it, like the buildings have the correct floor height and everything because mm. so I get really nerdy about this kind of stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a big, it's a big gun. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like, I, I always said that whenever you were you were sculpting ten mil guys with their boot laces on, <laughs> yeah, you know, you were going too far. I think you, you've you've really took it to another level. But I love you for it, man. It's yeah, no, absolutely these, beautiful. These are these are cool little models. Uh, you get um, multiples of these in the blister. It's the blister pack. Yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head exactly how many you get, but but you do get multiples. See, you do get multiples. You don't just get three. Yeah, in the well, blister. That... You get enough to run bigger scenarios than we've currently got in the book. All right. Most of them call for two of each, I think, and I think oh, you get I four of each in the blister, from what I remember. I see. Well, Dave, it's, it's really nice to see things chugging along for Drop Fleet Commander. It's nice to see the command cards coming in, because mm -hmm. that's going to add another tactical layer to it. I like seeing these, because that's just adding some extra coolness on the tabletop. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. Right, Everybody, on. get your comments in below. Do you like the fact that the command cards have now landed? Do you like the idea of doing some more different types of the, the actual sectors? We'll move on here, and we will see you in the next one. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.